And I, I was alluding to Wendy that, um, I mean, uh, l l l you speak for yourself. Do you think the Fed needs to be really hardcore here and keep raising and raising and raising until we hurt demand and, and really cause a sharp slowdown and, a, and higher unemployment uh, to conquer inflation? It doesn't seem like something that Brookings would really want to do, uh, at least not very often. So the, the part that I hope they don't have to do is when you use the word sharp. I hope that they don't have to create a sharp slowdown. But we do need to slow down the economy moderately from where it is, and particularly consumer demand for goods. Consumer demand for goods has been remarkably resiliently strong. It is still over 5 percent above trend. And I think we're not going to get inflation out of control in a durable way until the Fed can really bring down good spending. And, Kevin, I have argued that it's just no way to run an economy to try to, it with such a blunt force instrument. If we'd, I mean, if we were trying to increase supply, if we got a problem with supply, you'd want low interest rates for entrepreneurs to be able to start businesses to hire more people and solve the labor problem. You'd want more, uh, less regulation for oil and gas to, to bring down or, or to raise supplies. And, and, you know, demand is good. Demand is a growing economy. Demand is global growth. Can, can you do it through supply or does the Fed left with nothing but what it's doing right now, Kevin? Where do you stand? Well, well, sure. <clears throat> you, you could definitely do it uh, through supply, but that requires fiscal policy. And, and in fact, in the omnibus bill, they've got it exactly backwards. They have the sign wrong. There's about a hundred billion dollars of, of corporate tax hikes in, in that bill, and and so they're actually, you know, squashing supply while they're trying to fight inflation. But I think that the market's estimate of what's going to happen this year is about as Pollyanna-ish as I've ever seen. And let me walk you through it. It only take a sec. The, so usually what happens is that price inflation drops to wage inflation, but then it can't really go below it because firms you know, need to basically pay their bills. Uh, and so if price inflation goes to wage inflation and it's like a normal 70s recession, then it's going to stay there. And the Fed's going to have to do uh, what you guys just said you really wish, hope they don't have to do, which is really crack down because inflation is stuck at 4 or 5 percent. And it's not going to go down below that unless wage inflation goes below that. And wage inflation only drops if, if unemployment goes up a lot. So that's thing one. And so there the Fed has to act way more than 5 percent, way more than the market currently expects and certainly isn't backing up. Uh, at the end of next year. But the other potential is that the prices uh, uh, are, are dropped below wages. A and so then all of a sudden, let's say you had price inflation at two and a half and wage inflation at five, then corporate earnings are going to go like completely, you know, down the tubes. Uh, and, and so either scenario is, is really kind of a nightmarish one for equities. And so I kind of feel like we're in this irrational exuberant stage of the tightening cycle where people are assuming that the Fed is going to absolutely nail the soft landing. And, and I pray and hope that they do, but it'll be the first time ever if they do. And it's a very difficult problem to solve, especially with fiscal policies pushing in the wrong direction. Wendy, we con uh, consistently hear that labor is one of the problems. Maybe the, the, you know, you're seeing some cost of goods come down a little bit. You're seeing shelter uh, come down. But labor is staying uh, stubbornly tough to bring people back. Uh, after the pandemic, there is, a, there is an argument that it's too attractive to stay home. I mean, we all want to have a safety net, but those programs have expanded across the board. And, uh, it, you know, there are genuine people that, that are unable maybe to work, unable to get a job. But maybe there's a lot of people that could work that can stay home for forty or fifty thousand dollars a year. And, and that's why it costs so much to bring them back. Have we expanded too much on the safety net? So we don't see evidence of that in the data uh, by any means. Labor force participation among crime age workers is back. Where we've really seen a decline in labor supply is among older people, people 55 and older. And, and likely these are more permanent early retirements that the Fed just has to take on board and accept that we are on track for a smaller supply of labor than we were before the pandemic. But let me say, I think that the projection in uh, underlying the Fed's projections right now represents an extraordinary achievement and a soft landing. If we are really able to get inflation back down to acceptable levels, even close to our 2 percent target, and only open up a moderate amount of slack in the labor market and get the unemployment rate 
just for a short time, up to about four and a half percent, that would be extraordinary. Uh, I, I think that fiscal policy and monetary policy could call this a success. So I, I don't think that um, I think I think the markets are indeed being Pollyanna-ish, but I, I think the question that markets and the Fed are probably disagreeing on, and time will tell, is when we will start be start having projections that we're all running in our models, where if the Fed doesn't start cutting, inflation will actually undershoot two percent. At some point, that's going to happen. But uh, whether or not that happens in mid-2023 or late-2023, um, you know, those are open questions that we have a long time to answer.